jump right into today's to-do list. First up, some auditions. I have actually already done those. Check now. I'm gonna get ready for the day. And as you probably saw, I have a few items that came in PR uh, a while ago that I wanna try. So we're gonna do that as we get ready today as well. After this, there will probably be some new projects that I can audition for. I need to pump, AKA play Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I cannot put down. Then I will finish up the day filming a few short videos for my voiceover channel. So the reason I am using the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Foundation, which I haven't used in a while, Mwah, love it, absolutely beautiful. But the reason I'm using using it is because my plan A did not pan out. So the Jones Road What the Foundation is not without its controversy already. I'll be honest, I didn't follow it too closely from what I gathered. Someone might have used it incorrectly. Bobby Brown responded. It was all very like low stakes drama from what I got. Everyone handled it very well, I think. I don't, I don't really know. Anywho, I was intrigued at all of this visibility that it drummed up made me think, you know what? I could get into a hydrating tinted foundation that is equal parts foundation and coverage as it is moisturizer. Like I think it's supposed to be in two in one, skip your moisturizer, go straight for this guy. And I've honestly been loving it. I've had it for about two months, I want to say, and haven't used it 100% the whole time, but you know, for week long, two week long stints, I'd use it, find something else, come back to it. You get the picture until one day I went to go use it and it has beads floating in it. That's the only way I can describe what I found. I applied it to my finger, rubbed it into my face, and realized there is a gritty texture to it. It's almost like a mask that has a physical exfoliant, like there are these almost perfectly spherical beads floating around in here. And I also Googled to see, is anyone else having this problem? And I did not find chunky Bobbi Brown foundation beads in my Bobbi Brown found it. Nothing like that came up. So let me know, did you experience this? I am kind of struggling with this Jones Road What the Foundation now. And I don't really want to wear it anymore because not only does it leave a gritty, these beads don't dissolve. They are like hardened something in this formula, but I think you'll be able to see this in the close up that I do. They drag through the foundation and leave it streaky looking. So I just decided I can't be walking around feeling like dusty crusty and looking streaky. So about a week ago, this is a foundation I would have recommended, but as of right now, it's a fail for me. But what is not a fail is the eyeshadow palette I'm going to use today, which is the Sydney Grace California Coast palette. In the last video I posted two weeks ago, super sorry about that. I used their other new palette that came out during their most recent Christmas in July sale, full of greens and golds, absolutely gorgeous. And so I figured I would give this one a go with more mauves and soft pinks and dusty purples. And all of them were just gorgeous. And it's still not a brand, I don't think, that you hear enough about these days. So consider this a little appreciation look for Sydney Grace. Oh, it's been a while since I've done a mauve look. I have really been leaning into those greens and golds from the other palette and this. You know when you sometimes just do something you haven't done in a while and you feel like a different person, a little refreshed. You have like a little who is she energy, you know? This, by the way, is the Bare Minerals Maximist Mascara. And I gotta be honest, I was really on a tubing mascara kick for a while, but I am back to really loving non-tubing mascaras. There's just something about being able to take a cloth, a face halo is what I use, and really easily just like soak and scrub a mascara away. Whereas the tubing, I, the tubing mascara that I use and like is a two-step, so that takes time. And then it just takes a little bit more time to come off at the end of the night good when you don't want a mascara to budge in 105 degree heat like we've been experiencing but honestly i spend much of my time indoors so i don't really need to worry about all weather mascara you know now a little bit of bronzer some blush highlight always and now let's do the lips so these are from bare minerals obviously they sent i think this arrived on lipstick day which however long ago that was they sent two lip liners one in the shade Calming Cocoa, and the other is Treasure Red. 
then they also sent two liquid lipsticks, one in the shade Determined and the other in Mighty. Now, initially, these were the only lip products I thought I had to try until I opened this package from Urban Decay that's been sitting around here for longer, and it looks like they launched some new liquid lips, the new Vice Lip Bonds. And these are more intriguing to me than a lip liner or a matte liquid lipstick because they promise super long wear, like 16 hours of color and it sounds like they might be a serum type texture because you have to like shake them. So I'm thinking pigmented, I'm thinking feels light and long wearing. I'm thinking we need to try these today. The shades they sent me are Pleased, which is kind of like a mid-tone peachy apricot, cuffed up, and PDA, which I thought was going to be a bright red, but is actually more of a subdued mauve red. And I think the shade I'm going to wear today with this eye look I have going on. The instructions say to shake for five seconds, apply, and then let's set. I kind of don't know what I'm looking for here. Is it supposed to be like to feel totally set? Is it still going to be balmy? It's getting more sticky. I think that's good. And most importantly, it feels nice and thin and comfortable on the lips. Okay, that is the face done. Give me that satisfying check sound. I think we just added a new task for the day, which is to do a little wear test. So let's move on with our things and we'll check in at the end of the day. You can kind of see there is some transfer. I have been wearing this for about an hour at this point and you know, it just, oh, there isn't a ton of transfer. I was expecting that to be a lot more because it doesn't feel dry. It didn't dry down like your average liquid lip does, which means it's super comfortable and like moisturizing feeling on the lips. So I just, little bit of transfer, not a lot, and then look like it's gonna come off like crazy, like crazy everywhere else. Okay, this lip has now been on for over four hours, four and a half hours, let's call it. I have had lunch, a meat and cheese roll up, AKA an adult Lunchable. It's charcuterie to go. Had a can of soda. Diet Coke is my weakness. And picked up a baby who we gave some kisses too, and it did not transfer. All that is to say, so far so good. Uh, final test will be dinner. Fingers crossed I actually remember to check in. We'll see. Okay, we weren't exactly successful in doing a same day update. In fact, it is now two days later, but the good news is we're getting the review done now. And I've now had more days to try these lips for durability. And so here I have just eaten lunch, macaroni and cheese, and you can see it lasted pretty well. The few times that I've had like more oily things like dressings and things like that, they have worn away there in the center. So they're not totally food and meal proof, but they're still pretty good. All in all, they are lightweight, comfortable, pigmented, and pretty long wearing and durable. I would say that's a nice lip product to me. So we have a nice new lip product, folks. But now I gotta run. But maybe next time we'll try those Bare Minerals lips. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.